What's up everybody? Welcome to today's video. Today we have a specific one, specifically because we're talking here about, again, Lian Li HydroShift LCD 360 TL, but in a completely different form, because as you already know, it has a, well, I would say a different approach when we're talking about tubing. So it kind of makes it look like there is no tubes, not literally, but hiding the tubes behind the radiator making it quite nice but you already seen that in the review and i'm not going to go into details again talking about performance specifically in lian li case now here you have something that might give you an idea what we're going to talk about so we have i think it's 13 cases and um, 13 different brands well some of them do repeat but regardless of that mostly popular cases that are on the market and that might be interesting for you guys that actually want to go with a HydroShift LCD 360 TL but you want to go with a different case so in this scenario I tested out the same configuration in various cases giving you first of all does it fit because this is the most important thing and finally benchmarks as well so it as I stated at the beginning, it's going to be a different video. It's going to be benchmarking the Lian and Lee HydroShift LCD 360 TL in 13 different cases. So we have height, we have fractal design, we have Be Quiet, we have NZXT, we have what else? We have Fantex. Uh, what else? Uh, I have to have a paper because there's loads of data here that I need to give you and uh, read actually because I can't remember all of this stuff. Corsair as well, Asus, uh, what else, Cooler Master, Antec, loads of stuff. So let's start from the beginning. So I started with height Y60 and the original mounting, it can't fit. So I'm going to start with the cases that don't actually have the possibility to accommodate HydroShift 360, LCD 360 TL. So Y60 can't fit because of the tubes, because uh, it's uh, too thick. So that's one reason. The second reason, if the fans are on top, above that uh, specifically designed plate on the Y60, then we have space available for the radiator, 38.9 millimeters, while the radiator is 40.3 millimeters, give or take one millimeter. This is the Y60 problem. Uh, the, it, it even wouldn't be the bracket because it is actually, because the bracket design is completely different. So it's kind of laid down and the only thing that you could do here is, well, basically nothing because the chassis is too small on top. So Y60 is off the table and that includes Y40 because when you take a look at this plastic part, it kind of goes into 140 millimeter fan dimensions. So this is this is the problem with Y40, and uh, this is what we get at the end. Now, next in line is Corsair 5000D. Now, this you might consider, well, it's a huge case. It can fit, definitely. It has the space. No, so the original configuration is definitely no. And removing the side panel, it's too close to the motherboard with the tubes. So you get tubes colliding with the fans, and uh, this is an issue because it kind of squeezes the tubes you can mount the radiator but it squeezes the tubes so much that they block the fan from spinning and this is the problem with that case and the side mounting well here's another problem it's not wide enough so you can't get this part right here you could make it as an exhaust eventually maybe i didn't try that part but going in the original position you can't mount it on the side so that's Three cases already that are off the table, Y60, Y40, and 5000D. And then we go with Antec C3. So it can't fit because AIO, first of all, is too long. It touches the front plastic metal part and goes above by one centimeter. And the reason for that is that because of the motherboard IO cover that collides with the fan here at the back. So you could maybe possibly get that one centimeter of space if you grab a motherboard that doesn't have an IO cover. But to be honest, if you're going with Antec C3, which is quite nice visible case, and if you go with HydroShift, which is an outstandingly appealing design and definitely looking with performance aesthetic as well, you will most likely have 
want to have a nice motherboard. So this is this is the problem. Otherwise, I think it would fit, but the restrictions are there. Unfortunately, the restrictions are there. And then a shocker, because I left that case for the last one just to present it here, but unfortunately it failed. Uh, I didn't expect that. Now, the problem with NZXT H9 Flow, it, it's a huge case, right? It really is a huge case. And it gives goes to the point where you would expect, like any other brand, like any other manufacturer, that the holes for 120 fan would be on front, and at the back you'll have 120 and 140. NZXT in this scenario decided to place the holes 120 and 140 on the front and 120 at the back. So you have one, two lines on the front part of the case on top and one line at the back where you mount 120 and 140. Because of that, you have to shift, well, that wasn't intentional, but you have to shift the AAO a bit further back and what happens here? It collides first with the PWM headers. So the headers could possibly, in scenario where it's even possible, uh, make a hole inside the tube, which is of course not, a, not welcome and it might create a leak. But then again, you can't even push the AAO so far that uh, you could mount and use the 120 holes in the uh, NZXT uh, H9 flow. So these five cases are definitely out of the table. So we're having NZXT H9 flow, we're having Antec C3, Corsair 5000D, Height Y60 and Height Y40. Since I'm at height, luckily my friend has a Height Y70 and I managed to actually place and to test out if it can fit. It can, there is no problem, but unfortunately I didn't do any benchmarks and I didn't do any testing because there's a completely different configuration. Now it's time for those that actually fit. And this will be interesting because it gives you loads of options to choose from if you desire to do so. So we start with Fantex Eclipse G500A. Now there is a scenario here where, well, basically all other cases work properly. The only thing that you have to skip is the tube clips because the tubes are not drastically bent in terms of creating a problem eventually down the road, but they are bent so much that I wouldn't suggest using the clips uh, for hiding the cable at the back, for uh, grouping the tubes, because they are already grouped up. So Fantex Eclipse G500 Day. We also have Asus Stuff GT302 ARGB. Then we have Cooler Master Masterbox 600, which is a surprise because it's, a, as already stated in the review for that case, uh, quite an old school case with uh, Back Connect. And uh, furthermore, we have Antec P, uh, P1 Performance 1 FT Addressable RGB, Fractal Design North XL, Fantex NV5, which is another surprise because I didn't honestly expect that, and something that is quite uh, obvious, Be Quite Dark Base Pro 901. Now, when we go with benchmarks, uh, I'm going to start as I regularly do, IDA64, and then we have Cinebench scores. So, starting up with IDA64 Extreme Edition, what we get here is quite similar results, but also we get some uh, better performing cases. So, Fantex Eclipse G500A, uh, CPU 88 degrees, clock speed 4875 MHz, and GPU 60. I would say that the GPU is totally relevant in this scenario, but the GPU goes from 60 to 63, depending on the case, depending on the fans inside the case. And I didn't add any fans whatsoever in any of the cases. Just went plain stock as they come inside the box, originally packed, manufactured and everything else. Uh, but the cool thing about the Eclipse is that uh, it goes 83 degrees in Cinebench and we have 4,975 to 5,000 clock speed. The score starts at 26,476 and eventually goes even up to 26,611. Some sort of an average, I would say 26,550, less basically, 470 uh, in that uh, regards. So when we go with Asus stuff, GT302 ARGB, this one is actually almost the best performing in AIDA. Well, basically it is. I had a 64, 86 degrees on the CPU and 4900 MHz clock speed. Uh, when we go into Cinebench, uh, the similar thermals, 
compared to Fentex Eclipse G500A, so 82 to 83, clock speed from 4975, but has the majority with 5000, and the clock speeds and the Cinebench scores are well above 26,600, with an average of uh, something like that, 26,620 uh, 26, maybe. Cooler Master Masterbox uh, 600 case. Well, I think in this scenario, I think this case uh, doesn't perform that good with this AIO because all other cases in those terms outperform it when we go with the same configuration. So 92 degrees in either 64, 4775, as I said, 63 on the GPU, 90 degrees on the processor with 49, 4875 first benchmark and 4900 megahertz clock speed. Cinebench score go from 26,262, uh, eventually go down to 26,100 and finish at 26,300. Now, this is a bit strange because it has three front fans, one rear fan, and you get three exhausts on the radiator. It should perform better, but regardless of that, the AAO is something else. Then we have Antec Performance 1 Full Tower ARGB. 92 degrees on the CPU, 4825 clock speed with 62 on the GPU. You can already see that there is a slight difference. 87 to 88 degrees in Cinebench with 4975 to 5000 megahertz clock speed. And the Cinebench scores are going above 26,300. Eventually some go really close to 300, like 26,277. And uh, uh, average, I would say, above 26,300. Then we have Fractal North XL. Now this was a shocker because I expected much more, but 92 degrees on the CPU, 4875 clock speed, but better results on the GPU with 61. Uh, 88 degrees constant with 4950 to 4975 megahertz clock speed. Results 26,277. Eventually it goes from 26,200 to 26,300 and it stays there which is quite alright, it kind of does show a bit of a stability because it doesn't go drastic or like 3-400 uh, Cinebench points. But regardless of that, we go with the further one, Fantex NV5. Now, this case is interesting because I honestly, comparing it to Antex C3, I didn't expect for the NV5 to actually be able to accommodate. So, 92 degrees, uh, actually it's the same as Fractal North XL. Even the Cinebench scores quite similar, I would say. So from 26,200 to 26,300, which is okay. Uh, Be Quiet Dark Base Pro 901. Shockingly, CPU is 93, but the clock speeds are 4,925 megahertz and the GPU is cooler, 88, and it even goes to 83 degrees. So I would say that these thermals vary a lot, starting from Fractal North XL to basically Asus Stuff GT302. So from 88 to 83 and the last score, 4925 to 5025 megahertz clock speed. And it starts in 26,246, ends up at 26,579, which is outstanding because when you take into consideration, if you continue with the benchmark, it would definitely have a consistent of 26,500 plus. All in all, the best uh, case that I would somewhat recommend altogether is either G500A, Pentex Eclipse, or Asus Stuff, GT302, addressable RGB. Those two kind of stand out in this scenario, but also I wouldn't uh, disregard Be Quiet Dark Base Pro 901, because eventually it does perform properly and it does give the full potential of Lee and Lee uh, HydroShift LCD 360 TL. All other cases can fit, there is no problem. In most of the scenario, when we're talking about uh, hydro shift, I wouldn't recommend using the cable comb because we'll just get in the way, make a, a bit of a strange curvature of the tubes. And this way you'll be able to even hide the cables quite nicely along the passive heatsink. Since I'm mentioning the passive heatsink on the motherboard, I do have to mention the components that I used inside this benchmark. So. We have the MSI MPG B650 Carbon Wi-Fi. We have MD Ryzen 9 7900X3D. Then we have the limited editions Kingston Fury Renegade, but I use them on 6400 MHz because everything above that won't have any noticeable meaning uh, on AMD. And uh, for the GPU, I used PNY Accelerate GeForce RTX 
4070 Ti Super OC Virto Epic X. So all in all, what I can say from 13 cases, I think, yeah, 13 cases, five of them aren't compatible or Lianli HydroShift isn't compatible with those cases. It kind of goes in both ways, basically. Lianli created this tubing that is a bit different, but definitely aesthetically pleasing. And then you take into consideration manufacturers of the cases, which kind of go wild and create some weird shaped uh, brackets at the top. I know this is something that I'm not dissing anybody, don't get me wrong. I mean, everybody does what they do with their design and I can't argue with that. As I said, something goes towards Lee and Lee regarding the tubing, but it's more aesthetically pleasing comparing it to regular tubing. And then we have those cases that are just simply are either different or can just place a regular 360 AAO or something similar to that. So it kind of goes in both ways, I would say. Uh, as I stated, Fantex, Eclipse, G500A, and Asus a tough GT302 addressable RGB do perform quite outstandingly good with this AAO. And even, I would say, be quiet, Dark Base uh, Pro 901. So, yeah, but you, you saw from the close ups was the actual issue with all those cases that couldn't fit the HydroShift uh, LCD 360TL. So it's just a centimeter, a uh, different orientation of the holes for mounting a 120 radiator. Um, too close to the, the, the top of the case isn't high enough so the tubes can pass because you need at least, I would say two, two and a half centimeters for tubes to be rerouted from that part, because after all, the tubing is about one centimeter of thickness, so you do need some wiggle space first for the cables and stuff like that. The one thing that I would suggest, if you're going with any other case than than Lee and Lee, connect uh, all the cables at the top, connect the EPS cables, connect the PWM, connect the addressable RGB. You'll have in most scenarios you'll have the space for connecting PWM and addressable RGB. But EPS cables are a must to connect prior to placing the HydroShift uh, LCD 360TL inside the case or any HydroShift LCD in that regard. So I would say this was quite interesting and it was quite long testing. I do have to admit 13 cases shifting the HydroShift uh, from one case to another doing the, all the benchmarks. But it was interesting and I really enjoyed doing this. And guys, I really hope this helps you and gives you some idea if you already have one of those cases, but you really want to use this uh, AAO, here's the solution, guys. Hope uh, it helped you out. If it did, you can always check the links for the HydroShift uh, LCD 360TL and all the other HydroShifts. And finally, subscribe, hit the like button, notification bell as well, so you get notified on the future content. Thanks for sticking by. See you quite shortly.